So, off the rip, do I think Jalter is better than Edmund Dantes? Because Dantes is on radar right now, and Jalter is not. Fuck no. I could not in good conscience say that Jalter is a stronger unit than Edmund Dantes. It's just, it is completely untrue for me to say that. Um, is she still a good unit? Yes. She is still very good and like the utility of her MP can't be ignored, but Edmund Dantes is kinda in a class of his own at this point. Like he released shooting like hot fire. Jalter needs at least one more buff before she, I would say she even approaches that level of strength. There are just some issues that go on with her kit that make it harder for her to compete with someone like Dante's. So let us get started talking about Jolter. And here's a fun fact um, that I don't, I'm pretty sure I haven't told people before just because like this was, I did this before I started streaming FGO. I didn't know Jolter because I thought Jolter as popular as she was, she was in the main story. If you look at the other singularities, you'll see a lot of them are permanent servants and or story locked. I summoned at least uh, uh, 200 Saint Courts at the start of the game trying to get Jolter on, stand on story banner because I didn't look at the loot box pool. So off the rip, when I started playing this game, I wanted Jolter. And definitely took a while for me to get her. Uh, but when I get her, it's they are easy summons. And I'm happy for that. I really like her character. I like what FGO did. No spoilers about um, Ordeal Call 2 here. Again, I didn't really read it. I just know she has a pivotal role in it. Let us talk about the gameplay. I am not entirely sure if Jolter still has the highest attack of the game. But at the very least, it is one of the highest, if not the highest. 13,244. Uh, I still believe this is the highest attack in the game. That can't be understated because it scales with everything else. When you 120 her, she has the highest attack in the game, bar none. Yes, other units can get higher attack through their own buffs. Now, I'm not. I'm not saying that. But when your base value is high, everything else is going to scale off it. Um, yeah, like is a what like is a 120 MP3 going to hit harder than a level 90 MP5, right? The 120 can output way more damage if you keep swiping, but if you can't uh, grail a Jolter to like the 120s, she's just not going to hit as hard. HP, this is low to compensate for the massive attack. Honestly, I'm shocked it's not lower, to be honest. Uh, but there are a lot of four stars that would have more HP than Jolter. So there's always the issue of her burning her out her life for us if you use her with Vich. Because between Vich, Vich's skill and her own skill double stacking, you're talking about 4,000 HP lost from skills alone. She hasn't even gotten hit. This is just her double stacking her third skill and just two Vich batteries, and she already lost a third of her HP. If you are not running her with Merlin, you are going to have some serious um, survivability issues with Jolter. She is, she is truly going to burn, uh, use her life force as fuel for the fire. Star rate, Sergeant, Avenger numbers, and MP charge 0.83. Normally, this would be an issue with the hit count. Like, this is looking like normal year one stuff with uh, 0.83 to hit arts cards. Then you look at her extra attack, and it's seven. It is fucking seven with a base 0.83. Suddenly, this doesn't matter. As a crit servant, she's just supposed to crit on the arts card. It's probably, she's not an art servant, so you're not pressured to be spamming arts chains because it's not gonna do nearly as much if you decide not to use a bitch and you bring in like Tomo or 
hell, even Merlin, he's still an art servant. You're not going to be arts chaining like Merlin's MP like that. Uh, yeah, like this is healthy. I can speak from plenty of experience. Like Jolter, Jolter in a boss fight is not running into SP Gen issues that often. And to add it, if she is attacked, she gets a lot of gain. It's the base charge that same as Berserkers, but then Avengers also have their own passive um, where they get even more MP gen when they're attacked. So honestly, like the low hits on the arts cards, it's not the biggest deal. It'd be more of an issue if these were like 0.7 and not 0.83. Like low values, but not the worst, especially for someone that's supposed to crit. First skill, and this is something that I have talked about before. Self mod EX. Is this skill good on Jolter? Yes, she absolutely needs this as an Avenger. She cannot flood the star, the field with stars that well in order to like secure crits every turn. She needs star weight like this. The issue is Yes, this is EX, but the other two units that have this skill have gotten this buffed. Now, self mod isn't buffed that often, but it stands to reason when like the two units that have it, the highest rank have already gotten it buffed. So there's a precedent for her to get the, for Jolter to get the skill buff. And I do think for her, she does need the skill buff. Um, I don't think it's stars per turn, but I do think she needs something else for this. Uh, maybe she self mods herself so she can actually get the effect of her self second skill, which is 20% attack and then another 20% for dragon allies. If they decide to buff self mod so that she gets, uh, she can give herself or the team dragon, the best, like she makes herself a dragon and then boosts her own damage. Uh, if we look at the MP damage chart, she's going to shoot up like another, she's going to get another, uh, 20% attack buff and probably let's see. Yeah. target. Yeah. At MP one, especially cause she has a buffed MP. This is probably going to go to maybe 90,000. 90,000 is a lot for just a regular MP. Like Dante does not hit that hard. He just makes it so the enemy can't hit you back. So you could just keep spamming the MP. Jolter will have some issues with that, but she like if she gets hit, most of the time she has an inbull. Then the other times, like she's just doing a lot of damage. Um, she, she'll get her refund from like her actual face cards. So yeah, this is why I'm saying like Jolter might need another skill buff and it's just this one to buff up this one or they change this one. I don't, I honestly don't think they're going to change this one, but with the game moving more towards multi-core, these are all the servants that have dragon trait. So these are all the servants you can use, uh, preferably the ones that are a AOE that you can use with Jolter to give them a little bit more firepower i can't tell you like like basically it's just one three one like just weird nodes weird nodes that have more than one enemy um so jolter can kill like one wave and then however your situation is you can work with these other units units that like obviously summer buki works uh oberon if he can clear a wave like really will work because a lot of the time you use black row with Jol jolter anyway so oberon good but that that is wave three that is the end that is the end of the node not wave two unless like you don't need the single target for wave three so yeah this is the value of the skill has gone up over time as the metas kind of change from just regular three 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 to one three one uh two one three like the weirder the nodes are the better the skill gets and now we have the skill buff so our at the start 
people complain about this dealing a thousand damage but if you just heal that it doesn't really matter the issue always was that you had a buster buff and an invul and usually you didn't need both of them at the same time usually you'd have to give up one for the other this didn't help the issue this did not help the issue now you have a 50 percent battery with a buster buff so yes this is playing towards you mp and then you involve to just basically give yourself another battery afterwards the issue stems from is jolter going to even get hit for this invul to matter or did you just waste it entirely in a cq you have to be way more conscious of this obviously in farming it doesn't matter unless it's uh unless you're doing like a 90 plus plus storm pod against one enemy like king protea then then it matters a little more but that also comes into the issue where is king protea gonna hit jolter to get her mp back and i think i already said that uh The thing is though, I could not see them putting a 50 battery on self mod. I can't see them putting a 50 battery on Dragon Witch. It, it just wouldn't work. You'd have a 50 battery on five turn cooldowns. When you double stack, bitch, you would have back to back 50 batteries. Uh, like, to me, that's a little much. To me, that's like a little much to be able to double pop 50 batteries like that uh, while double stacking attack and crit damage like this. Would I have liked for this buster buff to get the um, Arthur treatment? Sure, but there's no fucking way they would make a three turn buster buff with a 50 battery in an invul. However, I would have liked it if they did uh three times three turns that would have definitely made this better that are like honestly that's what i wish but at the same time you might do like if you're doing a brave buster chain you might add <laughs> i'm trying to think because i think a brave buster chain with uh double bitch like with you getting 20 batter battery from each buster card you actually might loop 50 percent I think our extra attack would, because it's like 0.83, you might actually get enough to go from MP, Buster, Buster, you're at 40, and then extra brings you over to 50, or at least 49, so you're able to MP again next turn without even getting hit. Like when, we're talk when you talk about crit servants, there's, it's not like AoEs. You cannot calc precisely which shall well, okay so you can calc precisely like what okay so if i put this arts card in this type of chain in this position how much refund am i gonna get you could do that but you're playing a video game unless you are at work and you're like doing this stuff because you have free time but you can't actually play the game you're not thinking that much ahead most of the time unless you're min uh min turning in which case why are you even watching this video if you're a min turner like i am not i'm not plushy go watch plushy stuff you would be far better a resource for min turners than me uh but yeah my issue is that they crammed so many like strong effects on the same skill and at least now you'll probably need at least two of these at the same time sometimes you will get all three i'm not gonna lie sometimes you will get all three of these to line up and it's great but that doesn't happen as often as it should all right let's move on to passives I already talked about this get more hit uh this part right here though uh I always bring this up when we're talking about Avengers uh this prox Karen's passive where if she's debuffed uh she gets a 20 percent attack buff even if Jolter is in the back of the party Karen will get stronger because of it just want to keep bringing that up uh, for anyone that doesn't know uh, about Karen Passive, how that works. 10% crit damage and 4% gauge per turn every turn. So it helps clean up her looping. So that example, I talked about the Brave Buster Chain with the extra. You don't even fucking need the extra attack to be getting you 10%. You just need to get a 5. You need to get 5% from a 7 hit extra attack. 
granted that actually is harder than it sounds because you're it's a brave buster chain you don't have any extra gain it is solely on jolter but that isn't as hard as you think seven hit extra attacks hit fucking different even more if you decide to unlock this append like definitely if you decide to unlock this append that extra attack will guarantee get you over the edge when you need it on uh lower refund hands 20 battery in events you're gonna want this maxed out it will make your life easier and you can start doing uh more fun teams a lot uh earlier but if you mainly plan on using jolter for challenge quests because i do think that's where she shines far more than farming probably go for extra time but this uh, i can't not recommend mana loading at this point because as we just saw they love sh shoving batteries down older units throats they just they love doing it i would say a good 60 percent of all skill buffs lately have been give battery and that and a lot of the time that's just it i i can think of a bunch of servants coming up melt is a good example oh and also the other john they just gave her a battery too all right uh third pen anti-avenger she wants to be the best avenger uh no other avenger shall surpass my might blah 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 should be you know uh all that stuff she's adorable we saw it in summer three all right mp buff originally when the game came out this was it the curtain the overcharge was literally nothing and it put buff lock one time this is awesome this is an awesome debuff because it literally will make someone waste their turn or action this will use up an action so you will take less damage not only from them wasting their action but they are not getting buffed either unfortunately you cannot stack this it would be fucking amazing if you could just mp three times and completely lock out a turn of the enemy that's just not how it works if you do it against a caster boss however uh caster servant they only have two actions per turn so if you buff block them especially because they're casters they want to always be popping seals you basically just leave them as a sitting duck they can't they can't get any buffs and they will waste their action if they don't get the buffs they might just double pop the skill again and then they just lost the turn getting damage and then that turn i'm thinking ellie specifically she pops the mana burst it gets buff block then she pops it again buster buff 40 percent for one turn and then the turns over she loses it oh typical ellie shit. but she had a problem critting they buff the mp scaling and they drop now she drops 30 stars overcharge still sucks unless you're using a c that get some benefit from uh the enemy being cursed the joxy that gives you a free power uh power mod against cursed enemies jolter can use it and it's 50 percent starting she now has a 50 percent battery like that is jolter, like jolter doesn't have any power mods unless she's fighting man attribute uh so that is it's definitely not a bad power mod to have but it's not super effective damage it's not ramp up super effective but the bats to level her are super annoying <coughs> very uh year one stuff and she needs 45 of these hearts like every other uh unit that came out it's like in the first year of the game she needs a ridiculous amount of these and then a pens they're not as bad but they're still pretty bad they're they're not fun to level Bond CE, 15% buster while she's on the field. See, this one makes sense. This Bond CE makes sense. OG John has this, and it doesn't make sense. Jolter has this, and it makes sense because she has more than one buster card. I get John's supposed to be a support, but you're not using buster supports with John anymore. Unfortunate. This is such a fan favorite character.
if you're like no matter what i say if you light jolter you will summon to get jolter if you really want her if you're summoning for meta you're not gonna summon jolter you would just go dante's with his infinite uh stun lock mp guaranteed infinite stun lock mp by the way so I really like this servant. I'm going to enjoy having her costume with the download campaign coming to NA after the next event. And hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.